in the interests of a safer American home, a happier American community, a more united state. The American Broadcasting Company and its affiliated stations bring you Ellery Queen, celebrated fighter of crime. As usual, Ellery invites you to match wits with him as he relates the mystery. And before revealing the solution, he gives you a chance to solve it. Tonight, Ellery's guest armchair detective, who will represent you home armchair detectives, is the popular vocalist, Miss Peggy Lee. And now, here's Ellery Queen, your host for the next half hour. Thank you, Paul Masterson, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we meet Mr. Mark Gallows, who played a very dangerous game. I call it... One Diamond. And this is... Miss Eve Angel, Mr. Queen. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Queen? Won't you sit down, Miss Angel? <laughs> I'd love it. The uh, notes, Nicky. Yes, yes, Ellery. Is this your uh, secretary? Yes, I'm his... Uh... Secretary. Uh, Miss Angel, Miss Porter. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? And what can I do for you, Miss Angel? Mr. Queen, I've come to invite you for the weekend at the home of my employer. Oh, I'm tempted to say this is so sudden. <laughs> Isn't there some mistake? Oh, no. I'm sure, Mr. Queen, you've heard of Mark Gallows. Mark Gallows? You work for Gallows? I'm Mr. Gallows' secretary. The Gallows Diamond. What, Nicky? The Gallows Diamond, Mallory. It's not been publicly displayed for... How long is it, Miss Angel? Forty or fifty years. That's the Gallows. You are an efficient secretary, Miss Porter. Aren't you? I do my little best, Miss Angel. Uh, but I don't get this, Miss Angel. I've never met Mr. Gallows. Why should he invite me for a weekend? Because I asked him to. Oh. I'm to be your guest? In a way. <clears throat> what, Nicky? Nothing. I just went... <clears throat> Will you come? Yes. Goody, goody, a weekend off. Oh, no, Nicky. You're coming with me. For notes, Ellery? Uh, yes. For notes. Do come, too, Miss Porter. For notes. Friday afternoon, Mr. Queen, at the Riverdale Estate. Miss Angel. Yes? Why did you ask Mr. Gallows to invite me? <laughs> See you Friday. Au revoir. Interesting. Yes, isn't she? No, no, I mean the invitation, Nikki. Of course, this is Gallo's doing. Not her idea at all. Want to bet? Oh, don't be silly, Nikki. There's skullduggery involved. Is Gallo's the type? Mark Gallo's? <laughs> don't you know anything about him, Nikki? Just that he's one of the richest men in America. He's a misophobe. A uh, whosophobe? Uh, afflicted with misophobia, Nikki. Morbid fear of dirt. Dirt? Mm hmm. Gallows is supposed to have a gold-plated washstand in every room he commonly uses so that he can wash his hands on a second's notice. Oh, you're kidding. No, that's the story. Buys germicides by the gallon, picks strange objects up with a specially sterilized tissue. Oh, must be rough on his wife. No, fortunately, he's not married. I wonder what's behind this invitation. A two-legged word spelled E-V-E. -E. Oh, no, no, Nikki. She's just bait. I'll answer right away, Ellery. Oh, never mind, Nikki. I'll go. Yes? Nobody here. Uh, who is... It? Oh. Oh. Ellery, what was that? That sounded just like a sh... Ellery. Ellery! No, but Ellery, you What's can't. He thinking up, son? Oh, he's a fool, Inspector. You're not getting out of this bed, Ellery, and that's that. But I'm all right, I tell you. All right. With a bullet wound in your arm? It's nothing, just a flesh wound. You heard the doctor. It's that woman, that's what it is. Oh, it's not that woman at all, Nicky. It's the whole thing. You think the attempt on your life is connected with the invitation, son? When I'm shot at within two minutes, Dad? Of course. Somebody followed Eve Angel, guessed her purpose, and tried to rub me out. But why? To keep me from going to the gallows place this weekend, Nicky. Which is why I'll be there if I have to go in an ambulance. And come back in a hearse. Ellery, be sensible. You're still shaky, son. I'm going. You're not. I won't let you, Ellery. By gosh, I'm still your father, and you'll do as I say. Mr. Queen. Really royal, Miss Angel. That is a washstand, isn't it? 
Uh, yes, Miss Porter. By the way, when you meet Mark, I'd suggest you don't offer to shake hands. Germs, you know. Germs. I suppose we all have them. Yes. Let's go out onto the terrace. I want you to meet Mark's other house guests. Oh, I think that would be delightful. We have a sort of international house here this weekend, Mr. Queen. Oh, really? Mark and I are Americans. Sidney Duff Brown, the Englishman. Cornelius Van Cleek of Holland. And Reginald Doss, who's an Anglo-Indian. Oh, oh. What's the matter, Mr. Queen? Oh, nothing, Miss Angel. You bumped my sore arm. Oh, I am sorry. Shots? Yes. Shots. Oh, dear. Now I'll have to be so careful not to let you get romantic, Mr. Queen. <laughs> 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 oh, by the way... Before we go out there, when you meet Mr. Duff Brown, Mr. Van Cleek, and Mr. Doss, could you act just a little mysterious? Hmm? Uh, just to impress them, you know. The great detective. Oh, would it make you happy, Miss Angel? Oh, very. Then I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be such an exciting weekend. Uh, shall we go out? Yes, I think that would be a good idea. It's By right this means. way. Oh, oh, there they are. Gentlemen. Ah, Miss Angel again. Ah, with my guests. Oh, George, I didn't know we were going to have any competition. Miss Porter and Mr. Queen. Mr. Reginald Doss. Well, how do you do, Mr. Mr. Doss? Mr. Cornelius Van Cleek. Down Glad down. to know you. And Mr. Sidney Duff Brown. How do you do, Mr. Duff Brown? I'll fix something for you people in a moment. Uh, Miss yes. Porter, is it? <laughs> That's right, Mr. Van Cleek. Nicky Porter. Uh, watch Van Cleek, Miss Porter. He's a lady killer. <laughs> Or she thinks he is. <laughs> oh, now, don't mind those fellows. <laughs> what do you do, Miss Porter? Except the beautiful, I mean. Oh, I work for Mr. Queen here. Oh, work for him? In trade? By George, incredible. This is an amazing country. Well, not half so amazing as Nikki, Mr. Das. I really don't know what I'd do without her. <laughs> Working for Mr. Queen isn't really being in trade, Mr. Duff Brown. No. Definitely not. You see, he's Ellery Queen. The famous detective. Detect? Really? Your uh, drink, Mr. Queen. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Porter. I forgot yours. What can I get you? Not a thing, thank you. But the detective, Mr. Queen, this is exciting. I quite agree with Mr. Das. Uh, are you here socially, Mr. Queen? Or are you after one of us? Why, Mr. Van Cleek? Do you gentlemen have guilty consciences? <laughs> oh, dear, that's Mark. Yes, Mark. Is that that fellow Queen out there? Yes. Bring him in here. Mr. Queen? Is Mr. Gallows in the habit of referring to all his guests as that fellow, Miss Angel? Never mind, Nicky. If you gentlemen will excuse us... Welcome, Mr. Queen. Back through this terrace door, Miss Angel? That's right. This way, please. Miss Angel, there's something very strange going on Will here. Will you come this way, Nikki. please? It's right in here. Oh, oh, there you are. Confounded, Eve. You've got to do something about Reeves. He put my newspaper on my desk without spraying it first. I'll discharge him right away, Mark. Here, I'll get you a sterile No, towel. no, don't touch it, Eve. Well... So this is the famous Celery Queen. And my secretary, Miss Porter. How do you do? I'm afraid, Queen, we've uh, <laughs> rather put uh, one over on you. Have you, Mr. Gallon? Oh, it does seem such a waste, Mark. He's so attractive. Uh, then you were bait, Miss Angel. All right, Mr. Gallows, now that you've got me here, what next? Why, Queen, now you leave. What? That's right. He served his purpose, my girl. You'll please leave now, Queen. So... This way out. Celery Queen, are you going to stand here and let these Oh, no, no, Nicky. Mr. Gallows... Oh, dear. He's going to be difficult. There's no difficulty, Eve, that can't be smoothed out with a little money. Send me your bill, Queen, whatever your fee is. I don't charge fees. No? Then what do you live on? Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exactly what double-dealing intrigue you've whipped up here, Mr. Gallows, but certain things are fairly obvious. Oh, are they? This interests me, Queen. What's obvious? You're the owner of one of the most famous diamonds in the world. You have three house guests, Mr. Duff Brown of England, Mr. Das of India, and Mr. Van Cleek of Holland. Now, England is the spearhead of the world's diamond trade. India's maharajas are the world's greatest collectors of precious stones. Holland is the capital of the world's lapidaries. I'd say Duff Brown, Das, and Van Cleek are here to buy your diamond, Mr. Gallows. Be quiet. Yes, Mr. Queen? Why, we're suddenly all politeness. Why you scheme to have me put in an appearance here, I don't know. But would it interest you, Mr. Gallows, to learn that within minutes of Miss Angel's visit to my home, I was shot at with intent to kill? Your arm. Mark, what None would... nonsense. 
That can't have anything to do with me. Somebody didn't want me to show up here, Mr. Gallows. You're a writer, aren't you? Yes. This is real life. Get out. Mr. Gallows, you're an idiot. Come on, Nicky. Excellent, excellent brandy, Mr. Gallows. Yes, yes, yes. I'm glad you like it, gentlemen. How are you? Yes, Mark. Go out there and close the door and stand in front of it. Keep those long-nosed flunkies of mine away, do you understand? Mark, you're going to... Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, but I wanted to see it. Eve, I said get out of here. All right, Mark. Gentlemen, will you excuse me? Oh, but... Oh, no, don't bother to get up, please. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Well, gentlemen, I uh, have the very odd feeling, my confrere, that this is the great moment. Uh, hadn't you better have someone lock that door, sir? My estate is well patrolled up, Brown. Ah, Mr. Daz, you don't look very interested. <laughs> this is an old story with me, Mr. Gallus. Ah, is it? Then look at this. Huh? Around 150 carats, mm. Mr. Gallus. 162 and three quarters, Mr. Van Cleek. Larger than the Porter Roads from Kimberley. And of just as fine a water, Duff Brown. May I examine this, Mr. Gallus? Yes, certainly, Doss. Certainly. Uh, Doss, let me see that. Uh, one moment, Mr. Duff Brown. The Gallus Diamond Colossus. Hey, my father's wedding gift to my mother. Very sentimental man, my father. His will provided that the stone mustn't be touched for 25 years after my mother's death. Uh -huh. It's been a great trial to me, gentlemen. Very unproductive. <laughs> money gathers money. Diamonds gather dust. <laughs> yeah, it does. Do you like it? Mr. Gallows, it is quite the most superb imitation I have ever seen. Imitation? I say, Van Cleek, stop pushing. By George, it's not genuine. Is it a jest, Mr. Gallows? I have come all the way from Amsterdam. This is an exact copy. Worthless, of course. But sufficient for you gentlemen to base your bids on. When may we see that genuine stone, Mr. Gallows? It won't be exhibited, Van Cleek, until I get what I consider a selling bid. Confirmed by the principal for whom you're acting as agent. I can't say, Mr. Gallows, I feel entirely comfortable. I've never had my integrity questioned before. Nor I. Nor I. I'm sorry. I have to be careful, gentlemen. You, uh... Force me to show my hand. What do you mean, sir? That fellow Queen, the detective whom I had Miss Angel uh, invite a few days ago for the weekend. Actually, she engaged him in my behalf to uh, check up on you gentlemen. To is she real? Real? To Mr. Gallows. What is your meaning? The Queen came here today to tell me the result of his investigation. He tells me that one of you was a fraud and an imposter. I I must say. Say. Yes. I... An international jewel thief who's here with forged credentials. Huh. <laughs> Can you blame me for being careful? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Eve, Eve, you should have seen their faces. <laughs> You're so clever, Mark. Yeah, you think I'm not, huh? <laughs> oh, I get a kick out of this sort of thing, Eve, outsmarting them. Hey, you don't know these fellows the way I do, Evie. They're canny traders. They take their time. But they won't in this case. Hmm? Why, they'll fall all over themselves, proving they're not fakes. Each one will rush to make his bid and present me with confirming authority from his principal. <laughs> Things are going to hum around here, darling. And I'll bet you I get 20% more for the diamond. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> what? Look at this. Eh? Hey, is that charge scrap of paper? Hey, what is it? Take it. Read it. What's the matter with you? Wait till I spray it. So you invented the story that one of them is a crook, did you? When, of course, all the time they're all honest men. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, where'd you find this, Eve? Living room fireplace. It just missed getting burned. Of course, it doesn't say much. Wait a minute. This is the beginning of a letter. To me, Eve. I didn't see this. Neither did I. Yeah, dear Mr. Gallus, we regret that our representative has been delayed... Will not be able to arrive in the United States until May 15th to inspect the gallows. Di Eve! Eve, my lie was true. One of them is an imposter. Where's the rest of this, Eve? Talk, talk, will you? The envelope, the rest of the letterhead. Who is this from? Which one does this refer Mark, to? Mark, you'll have another attack. One of them intercepted the mail this morning. He must have been watching for this very letter. Maybe the rest of the letters in the fireplace, Eve. Mark, wait, wait a minute. Wait. I searched the ashes. This is all that was left. Get. Get Queen on the phone. Ellery Queen? But, Mark, he won't come now after. Get Queen! Yes, 
Gallery? Mark Gallows. Said he'd kept calling me all night, Nicky. What for? He wouldn't tell me. Said he had to see you and right away. Did you tell the great Mr. Gallows that Dad and I were out all night on another case? Yes. Do you want me to call him? No, no, Nicky. Anything interesting in the mail this morning? I haven't finished. Let's see. Bill, fan letter, special delivery. Special delivery? I didn't notice it, Ellery. From Mark Gallows. From Gallows? Well, apparently, Mr. Gallows is in a tizzy. Let's see. Dear Mr. Queen, you've got to help me. One of my guests is an imposter. What? Uh, uh, uh. Huh. He used me, Nicky, to scare Das, Duff Brown, and Van Cleek into thinking one of them was an imposter to force a quick sale, and then, by gosh, he found out one of them really is. Oh, serves him right. Expose the imposter, protect the diamond till the sale goes through, and, Mr. Queen, I'll pay you 10% of the sales price as a fee. Don't you dare turn him down. I need a raise. It's this way. The diamond has been buried on my Riverdale estate for years. Buried? I enclose a copy of my original map showing the hiding place. If anything should happen to me... Oh, darn it. I'll take it. Hello. Nicky? Oh, Inspector. Let me talk to Ellery, will you? Oh, yes, Ellery. It's for you, Inspector. Dad? Oh, yes, Dad? Your friend Mark Gallows. Gallows? Yes, what's happened? He's committed suicide. Suicide? Mark Gallows? Hanged himself from a rafter in his barn. Dad, keep everything the way you found it. What do you mean? I'm coming right up there. For what? I tell you, Ellery committed... Dad, sight unseen. He was murdered. Nicky, come on. <laughs> Well, murder. But, Ellery... I'm sorry, Dad, it's murder. I don't know how you can say that, Ellery. Neither do I. Man found hanging from a rafter, not a clue to a second person. Look at this rope he was hanged with. What about it? The rope comes from this barn, Ellery. It's filthy. It's what? His phobia. That's it, Nicky. Dad, Gallo suffered from a morbid fear of dirt. Now, there were two ropes in this barn. This dirty one here, and that clean one hanging over there. Even approaching death, Gallows would have used the clean one if he was going to hang himself. Huh? Gallows was strung up, Dad. And almost certainly by one of those three diamond buyers. The imposter. Imposter? What imposter? No doubt about it, Nicky. No doubt about what? Oh, I'm afraid we're a little ahead of you on this one, Dad. Are uh, Van Cleek, Das, and Duff Brown still here? Yes. You better hold them here for a while and keep them out of my way. Why? What are you going to do? Dad, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. I give up. Are you men? Yeah? One of you watch the body, the rest of you come with me. All right, Joe, you better stay away. Ellery, what are you going to do? Look, Mr. Gallows, over. Uh, turn around, Nicky. Oh. What are you looking for? Gallows sent me a copy of the map. Where would he keep the original? I'd say it's an even bet he carried it on him, Nicky. In a secret pocket, you mean? Yes. Or here. What? Leather pouch around his waist next to the skin. Is it in there? Oh, uh, no. It's empty. His killer took the map. Yes. But how would the killer know? About the map? Uh, Nicky, do you think you can stand a look at Gallo's face? Well, it's awfully dead looking. And dirty. See here, Nicky. Dirt around his mouth. I think our diamond hunter tortured Gallows into telling his secret. By putting dirt in his mouth. His phobia. Really nasty, Nicky. Why are you looking at the copy of the map, Ellery? Killer has the original. Must have dug up the diamond. I know, Nicky. I know. Let's take a look anyway, shall we? Maps, buried treasure. Why didn't he put the blasted Bobby in a bank vault where it belongs? I think this is exciting. There is something gold buggish about it, Nicky. Well, let's see. Uh huh. I think this is it. What's it? This tree, Dad. It's our starting place. Here, look at Gallo's map. I guess so. From this tree, you go due south. And then due west, and X marks the spot. Wonderful. Hmm. Due south, due west. But how far? Just says ten on the first leg and ten on the second. Ten what? Miles? Now, don't be sarcastic, Inspector. Not miles or feet or, or inches either, because then it wouldn't be far enough to cross that brook, and the south leg on the map does cross the brook. Right, Nicky. Therefore, it must mean yards. Dad, let me have that compass and yardstick, will you? Here. Go south. Which is this way. One yard, two, three... Hey! What, Inspector? Look at this, Nicky. A sort of trail in the grass. Ellery, see this trail? I saw it, Dad. I'm right on it. Killer's been here before us. Didn't I tell you, Ellery? Got it. Come on, Nicky. Here, watch this broker. 
Oh, gosh, I'm getting all wet. Very treasure. Here's the trail again. And this is the end of the ten yards, Dad. But the trail keeps going, Ellery, in the same direction. Uh Uh-huh, another yard. Killer went 11 yards due south. Yeah, and then he turned west. Two, three, four. And parallel with your route. A a yard away, I don't understand. How far does the map say you've got to go west, Ellery? Uh, Another ten yards. Nine, ten. But the killer's trail keeps going, son. To here. Toss that yard, say, Cobra. A catch. Another yard. Exactly. Again, he went 11 yards instead of 10. Funny. Wait. And what is it, Dad? Ellery, come here. Then, Nicky, stand on this spot, the end of the 10 yards west, so we don't lose it. X marks the spot. Or does it? And what, Dad? Look here. Somebody dug here, then filled up the hole. He found it, son. That map we've been following must be wrong. Darn it. For sure it must be wrong. After all, he had the original. Gallus must have deliberately falsified the figures on the map he sent you, Elric. I doubt it. Maybe the killer didn't find the diamond. Maybe he was wrong and we're right. There's only one way to find out, son. Uh-huh. Uh, Mickey, hand me that shovel. When you strike water, Ellery, let me know. No sign of anything yet, son. Not yet, Dad. Where? Wait. Here it is. The diamond? No. The metal box. Pretty well chewed up, too. Dad, give me a hand up. A hand, son. <sighs> Just a rusty old box. No, I think it's so eaten away it'll give without much trouble. <sighs> Diamond. Holy smoke, son. Is that real, Hillary? It's real, Nicky. So the killer knocked off old Gallus for nothing. Dug in the wrong place. Yes. Well, now let's go back to the house and finish this off. gentlemen, meet Miss Peggy Lee, the popular vocalist who has made Manana and her Capitol Records album, Rendezvous with Peggy Lee, both of which have set the public humming and dancing. Welcome, Peggy, to the armchair. Say, you know, it's too bad that we don't have a little more time. Then we could hear you sing one of the songs from that uh, Rendezvous with Peggy Lee album. Which you did in cooperation with your husband, Dave Barber. Well, Ellery, right now I'm... I'm too nervous to sing anything. <laughs> I've, ne- I've never been a detective before. In this case tonight, has me missing the downbeat, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid you're just jesting, Peggy. Anyway, what about our case? Tell me, have you figured out who hanged Mark Gallows? Well, I couldn't say exactly... Uh, I couldn't exactly name one person, but I think that Eve Angel had something to do with it because uh, she knew all about his fear of dirt. And I think that she probably was the only one who could intercept the letter that was partly burned. And uh, also that she was the only one who would know about the map. And he may have told her the wrong uh, directions. uh, Just to throw her off? Yeah, I think so. Uh That's a very interesting deduction. And thank you very much, Peggy Lee. We'll find out in just a moment if your solution is correct. Now here's Paul Masterson. What's the picture for your pocketbook in 5, 10, 15 years? It depends in large part upon the use to which you put your money today. Buying United States security bonds today serves two important purposes. It takes out of circulation money which would compete with somebody else's for scarce commodities. The second important reason for buying bonds is to make sound investments. Your plans for the future, whether you want something set aside to make leisure time enjoyable, whether you want to establish a business of your own or send your children to college, there is no better way to ensure those plans than to buy United States security bonds today. I will not be held indefinitely. I'm a subject of his majesty. Will you stop that weeping? You give me a headache. Oh, but he was so kind to me. Miss Angel, if you please. Uh, And what's this nonsense about murder, Inspector Queen? Yes, the man hanged himself. You said so yourself, sir. Uh, Yes, I did, didn't I, Mr. Dyer? 
You people all through? All right. Go ahead, son. Unfortunately, Gallo's murderer made a mistake. Mr. Gallo sent me a copy of that map, and by following its directions exactly, I located the spot where he'd buried the Gallo's diamond. Now, how did the killer miss it? Well, what were the directions? To go ten-something due south, and then ten-something due west. We assumed that the figure ten referred to yards, as they did. Since by going ten yards south, and then ten yards west, we did find the diamond. Then the killer did not take the figure ten to mean yards, or he'd have found the right spot, too. He took it to mean a different unit of measurement. Nikki, exactly how far did the killer measure? Eleven yards instead of ten each way. He reads the figure ten and measures off eleven yards. Now, how can that be? Only if, in the kind of measure he was using, ten units equal eleven yards. And which unit of measurement is that? The meter. The meter. meter. That's right. Meters exceed yards in exactly the proportion of 11 to 10. But that gives us our criminal. Oh, I do not see Mayor that. Mayor Cleek, you're not alone. Uh, how does that give you your criminal, Mr. Queen? It tells me, Mr. Doss, that the killer of gallows thinks in terms not of yards, but of meters. Could that be Miss Angel? Me? No, it couldn't. Miss Angel is an American, and we use yards, not meters. So do we in Britain, Mr. Queen. That's quite true, Mr. Duff Brown. And... So do the Hindus, especially one as anglicized as Mr. Reginald Das. Fortunately for me, sir. But almost all of continental Europe uses the metric system, including, of course, the Dutch. Ellery. Stop it, Van Cleet! Stop it! You have the advantage of me, in Herr Inspector. And there, ladies and gentlemen, you have the solution to our mystery. Thank you, Peggy Lee, for serving as our guest armchair detective this evening. As mementos of the occasion, I have for you a copy of my latest mystery anthology, The Queen's Awards, 1947, and a subscription to Ellery Queen Mystery Magazine. And here's Mr. Masterson. Panting, Mr. Q. About next week, I mean. <laughs> Suppose I give you a good reason to pant, Paul. Uh, want to meet a movie star? Are you kidding? Where? Where is she, Ellery? Uh, Nikki. Yes, Ellery? Mind stepping over here, Miss Porter? Me? What's the matter with you? <laughs> Paul, and ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet... <laughs> Nikki Porter, starlet. <laughs> this is Ellery Queen saying goodnight till next week and enlisting all Americans every night and every day in the fight against bad citizenship, bigotry, and discrimination, the crimes which are weakening America. All names used on this program are fictitious and do not refer to real people either living or dead. Among the members of tonight's cast were Howard Culver, Herb Butterfield, Kay Brinker, Joan Banks, Bill Boucher, Wilms Herbert, Eric Snowden, and Sidney Miller. Music was by Rex Corey, direction by Dwight Hauser. Entire production under the supervision of Ellery Queen. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. Would you like a shout-out? Leave a comment in the section below. Tell me who you want to shout-out to, who you want to shout-out from, and we'll get it up here for you. Hey, we want to say thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss any. you got a lot more of these up there. Go check them out under the playlist. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you want to see, what you think, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>